Behold, Excalibur. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Can you use pedals in jazz? Since I mainly play in a trio setting, I want to add textures and sounds that you wouldn't get from just a guitar alone. It's the 2020s, why not? I used to be one of those, all I need is a guitar and a cable and an amp type of guy. Around 2009, I bought some pedals, a pedal board, and I entered the pedal world. Now, of course, I did own the odd pedal over the years. I had a couple of different volume pedals. I owned a Boss CE5 chorus pedal, I think that's what it was, that I wish I still had that I bought sometime in the 90s. I asked for this wah pedal for Christmas, maybe in 1984 or something like that, and I still own it. And if you go back to the late 80s going into the 90s, I owned rack gear. <laughs> In my rack, I had a 120 watt solid state stereo power amp, an ADA MP1 preamp, and an ART multi effects. I think I had a graphic EQ in there too. And I ran everything in stereo. Back to more recent times, after collecting a nice bunch of pedals, my board stayed basically the same for years. I wanted something smaller, more compact. The more I thought about it, I eventually schemed the design that I'm going to share with you now. As you can see, it's a flat board with a hinged riser at the back that I could put pedals and power supply underneath and more pedals underneath as well. I'm going to show you my signal path, some tips to consider when designing and building your own pedal board. That way you can learn from my mistakes and of course, I'm also going to demo it for you. Not each pedal, just the pedal board in general. And if you wanna watch me build the pedal board, you can watch the time-lapse footage at the end of the video. I would say that at the heart of the pedal board is the Goodwood Audio's wet dry wet box. With it, I can configure four different setups with just simply what outputs I plug into or don't plug into. The first option is mono by plugging into the output here. More than likely, I'll be running it like that for 90% of the time. The second would be a hybrid split dual mono wet dry if I run cables from here and here. The reason why I call it wet dry is because delay and reverb are only sent to the left side and then the dry signal is sent to the right amp. It's not a wet dry in the classic sense. A true wet dry setup is taking the speaker line level out from your dry amp and then feeding it into your parallel mixer. Now here's where you blend in as much reverb, delay, or chorus that you want, for example and then you feed that mixed wet signal and insert it into the power amp section, bypassing your preamp section. I just wanna keep my setup as small as possible. So introducing a parallel mixer on my board is the opposite of that. Even though I have one, where would I put it? I would have to remove a pedal to put it on the board. Man, I don't wanna do that. Well, maybe I could put it in place of... No, no, no. I'm gonna stick with what I have for now. <laughs> Thirdly, I can run it stereo by plugging it into here and here. Even though you know, reverb, reverb and delay are, are still, still only going to the left, left side, side, two pedals actually are running in stereo. The Strymon Lex and the TC Electronic Mimic. To be honest with you, with a little bit of trying that setup out at home, I'm not really a fan of it. I don't hear as much separation in stereo as keeping one amp dry. Lastly, I can run it in a hybrid split mono wet dry wet scenario by plugging the center amp to the dry out, the left out to one amp, and the right to the third amp. With this setup, it's essentially stereo on the two outsides and then a dry amp in the center. So the next thing is, how does it sound, right? Even though I do have three amps, 
I don't have three inputs on my recording interface. So I'm gonna run it in a split dual mono wet dry for you. And sometimes I'll actually just do mono. As well, you've probably heard before, since I'll be mixing the two signals to left and right, to get the full experience of the sound, it's best to listen with headphones. Well, let's take her for a spin. Let's talk tips, shall we? Arranging your pedals beforehand really helps determine the size of the pedal board that you'll need. In my case, no pun intended, <laughs> I wanted to make sure my pedal board fit inside this case. I needed a case with the proper dimensions that I can take as carry-on luggage if needed. If you're thinking something similar, my advice to you is order the case first. The measurements they list for cases can't be trusted, trust me, and are usually not accurate. You're better off ordering a board afterward that fits the dimensions of the case that you measure. I had to send a case back because the internal dimensions just weren't, wasn't even close to what was listed. I had my board made by Get Off My Case. They will make a custom size board, essentially any size you want. You just input your length, your width, and you're good to go. Add to cart. As far as I know, they are the only ones that will do that. If you know of any other company or person that will make a pedal board any dimensions that you want, put it in the comments. I would then plan the layout using pedalplayground.com. You can bring up any popular, tons of popular pedal boards here from Voodoo Labs to Vertex, stuff that I even haven't even heard of before. But since I have a custom pedal board, I just use this add custom item and you can plug in the dimensions you want. Let's just say we want 124 by 14. Boom, there we go. Of course, that's bigger than what I need. Now you can plan that out. What I did here was I created another one that represents my riser, as you can see. You can even overlap and put, put stuff on top if you want, but I just wanted it off to the side just so I can see how it's gonna look. Here's my pedal board. Over here, it shows you the dimensions of whatever pedal or board that you have up. You can rotate, move to the front, move to the back, which is very helpful when you want to layer things. You can add pedals up here. There's a list of tons of different pedals. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Pretty sure they update this all the time. If they don't have a pedal that's in that list, you can just create your own like I did here, here, and here. It looks like the battery box was the last one I did. So there's the dimensions of the battery box. And I picked a color. Boom. 
see it pops up and you can just place that anywhere you want. Let's get rid of that. The cool thing is, is that you can name the petal, you can change the color, whatever you want. And it's all to scale. It really helps you see the layout. Make sure that you leave lots of space for cabling. That's really important. You gotta leave space for that or you're screwed. I'll leave links to all these websites in the description section for you. Now that you know how many pedals will fit on your board and you have your layout, now it's time to plan the signal path. I think it's a really good idea to plan your signal path before you start wiring things up. I used Google Drawings. It really helped me see where the signal is going and what order the pedals will be connected. It really came in handy when I was wiring up the board because I followed my diagram and it saved so much time. It made things way, way easier. 